What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Theme Runner here. Welcome back to another video and today I'm giving you guys my first impressions of the Brooks Hyperion GTS. Built for speed, the Brooks Hyperion GTS is the supportive version of the Brooks Hyperion. Both of these shoes are recently released and they are meant to slot into your rotation as speed day shoes. I took this thing on a bit of a mammoth test and I'm going to be telling you all about that and how I found the shoe. So as with all first impressions videos, only telling you how I used it, technical overview and then give you guys my first impressions as to how I found this thing. And I did find it slightly different from how I found the Brooks Hyperion itself. So if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content let me tell you how I used it. So the Brooks Hyperion GTS got a little bit of long run treatment. It's actually midweek and I took it on a midweek long run because uh, my coach has set me a midweek long run this week. We have a race next Wednesday, so we're shifting things around a little bit. So what do we do in that long run workout? Well, 20 minutes moderate, and then we had a two minute easy jog. We had some strides to do, and then we rolled straight in to some tempo work. Perfect to test the shoe out. 10 minutes tempo pace, and then I had 90 seconds to recover then I rolled into two by five minutes with 90 seconds to recover and then finally two by three minutes with 90 seconds to recover and once I'd done that I wrapped the long run up with a 30 minute moderate run so let's start off by saying in the technical overview section that I went true to size in this shoe which for me is a UK size 13 we're talking about an eight millimeter heel to toe drop confirmed stack heights from Brooks 22 millimeters of stack in the heel, 14 in the forefoot, which is why my calves are in shreds after that long run. And in my UK size 13, we're talking about 302 grams or 10.7 ounces. And as always, we'll work away from the heel counter, move it down the ankle collar cut out, tongue lacing upper midsole and outsole. Now, if you saw my Brooks Hyperion video, this might feel very similar. There's just a couple of tweaks to this shoe. If you haven't seen it, absolutely fine. Let's roll straight into this. At the back here, we've got a bit of structure, nothing particularly too crazy. There's a tiny bit of flexibility, but there is something in there uh, a plastic heel clip or something to give a little bit of rigidity which obviously is what you're looking for especially in a sort of I would class this as a mild supportive shoe and a lovely ankle cut out there sits lovely under the ankle bone so this uh, this ankle collar area and slight heel flare fits lovely around the foot medium padding in and around the back there so a little bit of cushioning not too much not too little and a tongue which is paper thin at the front here but then as you get down to the laces there's a little bit of padding there so that when you cinch the laces down on the top, uh, it protects the top of the foot from when you cinch down too hard. And we've got a cut out here in the tongue, a V-shape, which sticks around the top of the ankle bone nicely. In terms of the, the lacing system, oh, and it's a gusseted tongue. I forgot this in the Hyperion temper, uh, in the Hyperion video as well. It's a gusseted tongue, meaning it's attached from uh, medial to lateral side, uh, inside and out. Bit of elastic attaching the tongue uh, here and here, meaning it just can't slide left to right. Laces, I wax lyrical about the Brooks laces. Bit of texture to them, bit of roughness, um, meaning that when you cinch them down, they really lock in. It's They're so good, these laces. I really, really rate them. And I said in the Hyperion video, I just wish these laces were in every single shoe because you just get no issues with them they're absolutely fantastic in terms of the upper we're talking about a warped knit mesh upper which is a slightly confusing it's a mesh upper but they label it as warped knit uh, and it is slightly different from what we've seen in the Hyperion Tempo and the Max uh, a little bit less ventilation um, it feels a little bit thicker uh, but obviously the shoe is still relatively lightweight so they've done a good job at, at keeping the weight down on it but that wraps all the way around it's one piece a few uh, overlays a few laminations with the Brooks logo uh, but that goes all the way around very snug very nice fitting uh, foot fits in there nicely toe box is a decent width I have wider feet so it fits uh, really really nicely 
In terms of the midsole, we're talking about DNA flash midsole. And one of the supportive features, if you watch the Brooks Hyperion video, you'll notice that we have these added guide rails uh, inside and out of the shoe. Um, for support basically to stop too much overpronation going on. We'll talk about more of that in the first impressions but I just wanted to highlight that because that is a, a feature of this shoe uh, from the stability uh, standpoint. But we've got a full length um, DNA flash midsole, absolutely love this stuff, lovely and responsive, slightly firm but really gets you moving and turning over nicely. Then we have a rubber outsole coverage uh, from top to bottom and another feature and difference between um, the Hyperion and the Hyperion GTS uh, this was a cutout there you could see midsole foam through the middle of this section here you can't on the GTS again I'm going to assume that's to help stop too much over pronation inwards so there's a couple of features there with the guide rails inside and out and this section here which basically when you land you're just trying to stop too much of that ankle collapsing and naturally what we all do uh, as runners is we land sort of like if these, these are our uh, toes we land kind of on the outside and we push off on our big toe we kind of roll through and push off with the the goal with these uh, supporter shoes is just to stop too much uh, collapsing in and just try and keep it a little bit more natural uh, as we toe off. Just a little bit of a lesson there. <laughs> I'm sure most of you know it if you're watching this. But yeah, just wanted to share that, and that is it for the tech. So let's get straight into my first impressions. How did I find this shoe? There's a couple of points that I really want to highlight with this scene, but before we do, very quickly, a massive thanks to Brooks for sending me this shoe. I didn't have to pay for this shoe. They've sent it for the purpose of review. However, they have no editorial control. They don't know my thoughts, and they certainly won't be seeing anything before you guys get to see this video here uh, on YouTube so just wanted to make that very clear and there's a couple of things that I need to highlight with the shoe and actually if you watch the Brooks Hyperion video a couple of updates to that shoe grip is one of them and stack height unbelievable so effectively I said in my Brooks Hyperion video that I wouldn't consider doing a long run in this shoe but I guessed I guessed that the shoe stack height will be around um, 30 to 22 32 24 ish somewhere around that region it doesn't look too dissimilar from the max when you put them next to each other oh how i was wrong and i thought to myself at the time with that sort of stack height why why actually wouldn't i, I stopped recording that video and i thought actually why wouldn't i do a long run in that shoe in days gone by when we didn't have these big max cushion shoes i would use these type of shoes all the time so why wouldn't i consider it now i had a midweek long run lined up because we've got a, a 5k uh, race next wednesday so i thought i'll try i'll test it why not test it on a long there's a bit of tempo work in there it's a speed day shoe moderate running is also something that I said in my Hyperion video I wanted to do more of in the shoe so I thought yeah this is going to tick both the boxes a moderate start a moderate finish a bit of tempo work in the middle with some strides before we get into that perfect 90 minutes in total let's see how we get on well my calves are in bits I'm not even gonna lie my calves are aching and sore not injured just they're sore they know they've done some work um, and I've got to be honest with you it kind of confirmed to me when I was out there running that actually I wouldn't use this for a long run at all. Uh, in terms of the speed section of the run, it did quite well. I was happy with it, very similar to the Hyperion, but I did notice that weight difference. We're talking 278 grams uh, in the Hyperion and 302 in this, which is a 24 gram difference, if my maths is right. Uh, and that's going to be the addition of these guide rails on the side here and this extra sort of rubber outsole here. And I did notice that. What I found with the Hyperion itself, uh, the non-stability version, uh, it was super lightweight. I moved quickly. It felt really, really good. This felt a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more shoe. There was a little bit more of it to move. And so, yeah, I completely appreciate it was, it is an absolutely a speed shoe, but I did find that the, the difference between the two shoes was, was noticeable. But... From a stability perspective, what I really did notice is as I was landing over sort of my, my arch of the foot area in the midfoot, I really did feel stable and secure. As I landed and went through the foot strike, I really felt the shoe kind of grip onto me almost so that I didn't kind of do any crazy overpronation stuff, which I'm going to assume for a lot of people that run in stability shoes is exactly what you want. So from that perspective, I noticed that feature in the shoe and that felt good. The grip is the other thing I need to mention. Um, the grip in this shoe wasn't particularly the best. Now with the Hyperion, I didn't obviously get a chance to test the grip because it was dry when I was out running in that speed workout. It was wet today. 
and this thing is quite slick. It doesn't have the best traction on wet tarmac. On the dry, uh, on the compact trails that I was running on, absolutely brilliant, 10 out of 10. As soon as I hit that tarmac, it was a little bit slick. So what I would say to you, I was having to go up and down some tarmac to do a couple of the reps, and I had to take quite a wide turning circle, and I was very, very conscious of it. So I just wanna make that point very clear. Durability on the rubber of these shoes, like in the Hyperion Tempo and the Max that I've tested before, is great. It will last you a long time, but grip, <sighs> Just be careful. If you live in wet conditions, like a wet climate around the world, if you're watching this from summer, there's quite a lot of rain, mm, consider maybe not having this shoe. Otherwise, just be aware of it uh, when you do purchase the shoe. Otherwise, an extremely similar experience to what I found in the Tempo, um, in the Hyperion, uh, a, a lightweight, shoe um as i said noticeable difference from the two but overall i enjoyed it and it was good fun but i did kind of get to the end of my long run and kind of feel like ah this is yeah this is not giving me what i need uh, at the end of a long run workout so for me absolutely now testing both of these shoes just going to pigeonhole these into a speed category both of them great for those interval workouts again i talked in a previous video about uh, comparisons from a neutral shoe perspective uh, which was like takumi sen uh, was the Puma Liberate Nitro, Adidas Adios 8, Nike Streak Fly. It's that similar type of racing flat category. Uh, in terms of a sp stability perspective, the one that springs to mind for me uh, is the New Balance Prism. That has a bit more stack height, but uh, I tried the version one of that and again, feels relatively similar. Uh, which I love that shoe and I will thoroughly enjoy this shoe as well. So in terms of first impressions, it was a good start, but it definitely made me realize definitely not a long run shoe and the grip is something to be aware of. So there we go, those are my thoughts on the Hyperion GTS. A solid outing, as I said, definitely not gonna be a long run in them again, but overall really good. And we'll start mixing and matching some miles with the Hyperion in these over the coming weeks for more testing. Love to hear from you guys if you're considering picking this shoe up. If you are, let me know and let me know what other other supportive speed day shoes you guys are using it'd be great to hear from that angle because I don't test too many supporter shoes so it'd be great to hear what your comparisons on this type of shoe uh, would be if you enjoyed today's video guys make sure you give it a like share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly running content I'll see you on the next one until then